Hi, this is Tali Barolka, the Anxiety Coach. I am joined here today with Elena to talk about her anxiety journey as part of a series of interviews that I am doing in order to take that shame lid off of anxiety. If you have anxiety or have you have been affected by anxiety and you'll be willing to share your story with us, then please be in touch with me. The details will be at the end of this video. Hi, Elena. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Please tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, Tali. Thanks for inviting me here. I um, uh, I help uh, digital in, with, with all the aspects of digital marketing. I work with um, uh, business owners and uh, startups. Um, and actually, because I've, um, I've I've had such an extensive uh, consultancy practice, uh, I work with entrepreneurs. So this journey, um, how to, from the moment when you realize that you are anxious about certain things when you don't know what actually are you afraid of, what are you worried about, and until the moment when you realize uh, that you can control it, uh, it may take years sometimes. And I can see that most um, business owners um, fail, not because they, uh, not because that something is wrong with the idea, but because yes. they, that there's so much overwhelmed, so much anxious, so, 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 so much afraid of their new identity. So I agree to to uh, uh, to be interviewed here because I think that the 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 topic that you are uh, you are working on that you are raising this raising the awareness of uh, uh, about the anxiety is extremely important. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Do you want to tell us what is your earliest memory of anxiety, of you having anxiety? Uh, I guess you know. Uh, I grew up in in uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, my my childhood was in the Soviet Union. Yeah. So that was where the nineties, the most dangerous and uh, the, the the highest we ha used to have the highest criminal rate in those uh, days when people disappeared from the streets and there were gangs and mafia. And by the way, some of those guys are uh, now in the municipalities and politics and the government. So um, you're talking about in Russia, right? In Russia, in yeah, yeah, right. I was a uh, little girl, and um, my mother raised us. Uh, me and my sister. She was a single mother. Uh, she was divorced. Uh, um, so at the age of when I was uh, three, uh, they got divorced with my father. Um, somehow, my mother insisted that my father would be alienated, although he's um, he's a absolutely kind and loving person, but uh, that was her belief. And I believe we suffered, um, uh, we suffered a lot with my sister because of this decision. And, um, uh, and you know, when you, when you add up on this uh, instability, the economic instability in the country, and my mother was uh, the only supporter. Um, so she had to work really uh, very late in the evening, uh, and there were no cell phones. Uh, I was left alone at home at the age of six, seven, eight. So the the earliest. How old was your had, sister? Your sister's older or younger than you? She's older than me. Uh, but she's five years older than me. Okay, so, so she was looking after you essentially. Yeah, she 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 was at school and she had her own um her own um, things to do when she she was. 10, 11, 12, you know, friends and uh, after school activities. Uh, when you think about, when I think about my uh, first memory, um, I remember standing, my, uh, standing at the windowsill and trying to, it, it was dark already, like even um, at five or six o'clock in the evening, it is dark uh, in November, December yeah. uh, in the city where I lived. I was looking at the at the street, uh, trying to um, to find the, the familiar figures of my sister and my mother, because people built, they, they they disappeared from the streets. Uh, girls were raped, uh, women. The, it was robbery everywhere, and um, and you could you could never know when they're gonna come back if they come back at all. Uh, it was a very very unpleasant um, feeling. Uh, yeah, this is the what, first what, time city, that I... What city were you in? 
I lived in Yekaterinburg, which is, uh, it was known to be number one in terms of criminal rate, because uh, uh, people uh, probably have heard about uh, Euromash Mafia. Uh, they once, uh, they once, you know, uh, you, can, you cannot imagine uh, what, it was, it was worse than, I don't know, probably in, um, um, it, it, when we think about what, what are the most dangerous places on the earth, uh, my city was one of the one of the one of those cities uh, in those days. Yeah. Wow. So your earliest memory is around the age of six or seven. Probably eight. Probably because I was. I remember I was uh, grown up already to understand that my sister might be raped. My mother can disappear. And I might be left alone, just just on my own. And you didn't have a father. And my father, my father wasn't present was in your life. He could, he could not visit us. In those days, it was common, you know, uh, women uh, having the best intentions for their children. They really thought, and um, I cannot be angry at my mother because those were the beliefs in the Soviet Union that are uh, that this is. Um, uh, uh, this is the, how we were raised. Uh, if our mother and father get divorced, it is usually that they would stay with their mother and their father is not allowed visits. It was until the age of, um, of 22, 23, wow. when I saw my father for, uh, for, uh, for the first time after such a long period of time. Although he had been always very, very um, determined to, to pay all the money, or the child care, support, everything. He was a really great man, but uh, that's, that was the love story with, which ended up uh, as it ended up. Can we go back to the age of six, seven, eight, this period of time? Can you just tell us how, how did anxiety affect your childhood? Um, you know, th those time, uh, times, I did not feel that it really, um, like, it was continuous worrying about the future, that um, I might be left alone, that I might uh, lose uh, my family. Um, if you, when I, when I was 12, I remember that the girl, I, I went to music school, to music school, and there was a girl there, who, she was a flute, she, she played flute. So... She was um, um, she was attacked at the bus state, uh, stop, and nobody has ever seen her after that. Just she disappeared. Uh, I remember that until uh, today. Yeah, nobody knows where she is. But people saw that that again stopped uh, uh, next to the bus station, and they just took her. They just dragged her into into the car uh, because we played together. And when she did not appear uh, for the rehearsal, I remember that, you know, uh, even now when I'm telling this to you, I feel like, you know, this, the, the, you feel an attack, a wave of such an anxiety, of such a fear, uh, absolute uh, helplessness, because you don't know, you don't, you don't know. Oh, no. You think yeah. that you, you're gonna be next. Uh, so I guess it's, it's so in unknown. the body. This, this, this fear stays in the body. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are three, um, psychologists say that, that there is the freeze, fight, and flight, right? Fight. And there is also another one, action. Freeze. I don't know what to do. I like, I like feel how this uh, sends this overwhelming fear and when you, you don't know what to do, when you're just unable to move. And then you are you are the target. You are, you are a victim. How can you go go forward in life a little bit? Let's say to your teenagehood. How did the anxiety and the environment that you're growing up with? Because um, it sounds like that's really anxiety, extreme anxiety triggering. It wasn't like your standard everyday, like what we you know, like how a lot of us grew up. Can you tell us how the anxiety affected you during that period of time, let's say your teenagehood and a bit further, you know, down the line? You know, 
on the one hand, it is, uh, it, 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 those were horrifying years in terms of um, your body grows, your hormonal system changes, and what, it, it is added weight. Uh, I used to, I, I was a, uh, I used to have solo concerts at the age of 13, 14, 16. To have what? What did you say? Solo concerts. Uh, I, I, oh, I solo piano, concerts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I gave the piano concerts. So, um, you know, there's the, um, when you feel it, it's an extremely unpleasant feeling, as you can imagine. Uh, Later on, I used to, I realized that this is a fear of uncertainty, of um, um, fear of um, complete isolation when you, um, when you don't have any information about what is happening to your family or to your friends. Um, but at the end of the day, um, uh, you sense it in your body that when you have uh, if it pains in the in the stomach, you have, uh, for example, before the concert, um, we we are trained in musicians, uh, professional musicians, um, sportsmen, a uh, sportsman. We are trained in a way that doesn't matter what you are supposed to go to the stage and perform. And no matter how worried you are, no matter how uh, um, well, how frightening it is for you, but you must go out and perform the best you can. So I guess um, at that uh, point of time, um, it was a continuous fight. Like uh, on the one hand, an inner part of yourself is telling you, oh, I'm that frightened little girl standing at the window ceiling, uh, uh, windows uh, to, to, to next to, by, to the window and trying uh, to um, to find uh, my mom and my sister in, in the snow, going through the snow because it is extremely cold there uh, in the in the. Do you still find your mind goes back there a lot? Um, yes, I have dreams about that, nightmares about it. Uh, it triggered me, uh, you know, after my twins were born. Um, I think around five or six months, I had I used to wake up in the morning as if. At the time, eight years old, as if I'm standing at the same <laughs> windowsill, looking. You know, this is really this is something that your uh, mind does to you until um, this is um you know um this is PTSD. But, but thanks God, my family uh, was okay. Um, my sister is okay. My mom was okay. So not, and that there were bad things which happened to us, like, I don't know, we were robbed five or six times, our, our apartment was robbed. Um, yes, I was beaten once in the street, but I, but I survived, I'm okay. I didn't have any yes. fractures. Yeah. No, I guess this is the, uh, you, yeah. this is the feeling that somehow get, gets rooted into your body. And whenever you have the next challenge, it fires back at you. You know, you have this all of a sudden. This uh, uh, when you when you feel paralyzed, paralyzed with uh, with fear, with anxiety. Yeah. Have you ever like been to therapy? Have you ever like helped yourself in any kind of way, in terms of dealing with the past? Yes, I had a therapist who had been working with me for many, many years, and even sometimes, even, even nowadays, I, I, I call her. I um, think we've been in con constant contact for 30 years already. As you know, at some point, I don't remember when it was, probably in my this In which country? Years. In Israel? No, no, she's from Russia. She's from the same city. Um, because at some point of time, uh, I had speech disorder. Can you imagine? I now earn money. Uh, uh, and how many languages do you speak, Elena? Lecturing. How many but languages? I, speech, I speak uh, three languages. Uh, but um, at some point of time, um, I couldn't continue. It was a question mark if I could continue studying at, at the same school. As we had a school, it was sort of prod prodigies, something like that. It was not pro prodigies, but you know, they used to have a hierarchy of schools. Uh, it, was a, uh, it was a good school, a top school, yeah. Yeah, so because I could not um, 
with in the teenage years, all of a sudden I started having this speech disorder that I was I I, I spoke too too fast, so fast that nobody could understand a word. <laughs> Do you, think, do you think that yeah, maybe that actually stems exactly. from what was going on in your life? Like if you're speaking mm -hmm. very, very far, if you're speaking extremely fast when nobody can understand you, yeah. do you think that that was sort of like a result as, um, was a result from what was going on in your life? If you're, if you're the life surrounding you was very like anxiety triggering, do you think maybe that the reason that you were speaking extremely, extremely fast was because you were like constantly feeling that anxiety in your body and that's how it came out? Uh, exactly. I was not aware of that. And nobody, they used to think that this is something that is connected to the, uh, the, the uh, neuropathologist should, um, should deal with. And then um, he said, no, everything is fine. Um, then, you know, there is a um, uh, speech disorder therapist and then she said everything is fine. Uh, she does not start. Uh, uh, so uh, I was extremely lucky uh, to have found a therapist who, um, who not only tested me in terms of uh, what it might, uh, what not only diagnosed me, but it really helped me to come back to my um, to my past, and she somehow, I felt disenchanted with those, um, with those, um, uh, with those situations when, when something triggers me, but still, I, until today, it's a journey, tell me, it's, 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 it's a never-ending work, yeah, uh, that you have to, uh, to do all the time, it's like maintenance, that whenever you have some certain situations at work, or, you, I don't know, delivered uh, another child or something is going in a family. It's all the time triggers those, uh, those, um, uh, those traumas and um, your wound starts being painful again. Um, can you tell us what have you like done throughout the years? Let's say, okay, here's a question. When did you move from Russia to Israel? Soviet Union, I should say. Um, it was, uh, no, it was 12 years ago. Okay. 12 years ago. I was a grown up person. Uh, but, you know, with those, um, in those days, we were not that uh, aware of all the techniques around meditation and relaxation. Yeah, that's a very recent thing. Yeah. Yeah, but um, my therapist helped me a lot with that. She was aware. She was extremely advanced in all those uh, uh, techniques. And I owe it to her that, um, first of all, my speech disorder has been resolved within within months. And then the gift that she made to me that uh, I know how to regulate my, my fear and anxiety. Um, this is something that is invaluable. Can you share with us what does she do to help you? If it's not too private, I'm saying, if you don't mind. Like, what were the techniques that she gave you? Was there anything uh, specific that she gave you? No, no, no. We used to do meditations. She explained to me uh, um, when I started the therapy at the age of uh, 12, I think, or 13, I knew about parasymp parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic was the difference and how yeah. aggressive your sympathetic uh, system can be and how to activate a parasympathetic. And now I teach my children how to do that. How, well, how to emotionally regulate themselves? That's so mm -hmm. healthy. That is extremely yeah, healthy, too. extremely healthy, extremely healthy. That's a tool for them for life, by far. Right. Um, can I ask you, growing up, Throughout your whole life, up until now, at what point did you realize that what you had was called anxiety? When did you, were you able to label it? Until I met you. What? Really? I was not aware of that because, wow. you know, um, somehow my mind, um, because I have... Just for our viewers, me and Elena met very recently in January. Yeah. January, really? think, this yeah. is the first time. Yeah that I've realized that probably what triggers me, uh, uh, I'm lucky not to suffer from it all the time. Yes. That's, 
uh, yes. uh, let's put things in proportion. I have it uh, when I feel endangered in some way. Uh, well, for example, if I um, if I have problems with um, I, I don't know if I can't see my children um, at the shopping mall if I if I don't know where they are. Trigger. It triggers me, and then for I, sure. But that's also coming from your upbringing. Yeah, that comes from yeah. I can feel really depressed, even for for for, for another day or two. As a result of that, you're saying? Yeah, when, when I don't know where they are. For example, they're playing somewhere and then they disappeared and I don't know where they are. Also, it's, it's kind of normal for children. kids in Israel. Like, it's a pretty standard, like, yeah. yeah. I can see a difference between the reaction of other parents when they, uh, for instance, uh, lose sight of their children um, in my reaction. My kids are eight and a half years uh, old now. So I, well, even last year, I remember um, we had an incident when I we were, we were playing at the park and my daughter, um, she, she was at the, you know, sliding somewhere. Uh, and it was uh, getting darker and darker and I couldn't find her for half an hour. So it was, it, it was a park in the center of Modi'in there were many, I don't know, hundreds of families. And uh, mothers, uh, other mothers, they uh, they helped me to find her. And I could see that they were relaxed, that they were not worried at all, that they used to tell me, that they used to comfort me and say, you know, Israel is the safest country in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, people don't disappear from, from the streets yeah. here, thanks God. But uh, it triggered me such a panic that I could not be get to myself uh, for a couple of days after that, and I uh, and I see a huge discrepancy between um, you know those uh, uh, how we react how I react to Syrians uh, when we have some um, you know we we, we have some uh, once in a while <laughs> um, we have Syrians also. Uh, um, when was it? Six months ago? No, eight months ago when we had the, the, the last one. I'll be honest, yeah, I'll, I've lost track. It could be. I think it was January, December. Honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Like every few months we have it. Yeah, yeah. we have it. Um, it's like the elections. Every few months we have elections, you know. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. So it, the, the thing is that whenever we, whenever we have a situation, I have to do this work again, like to to comfort myself, to uh, to come back to breathing exercises, to feel more, to remind me that what I'm having is is not the reality. It's just my my own perception of uh, of the of the world that I'm living as a dangerous place. And thanks God, it is not uh, anymore. Elena, can you just go back to what you were saying? You see there's a disc discrepancy between how your reaction of when you lose the kid, your little kids versus, let's say, your standard Israeli parent. Um, can you just describe that a bit more in detail? Because um, from what you're saying, it definitely sounds like a trigger from your childhood, because you said before that, you know, you'd never know when your mother or your sister would come home or if they would come home. So yeah. it's definitely something reflected from the back, uh, from the past coming forward now into your life. So can you just go more into detail, like how you, how it, it plays out into your life now in the difference of between how an Israeli versus you, how you would react? Um, in, in the shopping centers, shopping malls, for example, um, it, it, it's a standard Israeli family has three kids, so I understand that in most cases, uh, mothers uh, can mothers or fathers uh, can lose sight of their children, and yeah. they feel they will find them. It's just a matter of time uh, that nothing's they, they, it doesn't occur to them. This is not their first thought. Let's let's put it this way. Uh, of course, uh, horrible thoughts. All I, I, I believe that uh, every parent they start uh, getting worried, 
but uh, this is not their first thought. Their first thought is to just to speak to looking around. Uh, and um, it, I don't see them sweating. I don't see them, uh, you know, their face would go red. They just continue walking around asking or shouting uh, uh, the, the kid's name. And people normally help each other and they find, uh, eventually uh, we find our kids. But it's not the way that my, uh, that my sister works. I have to remind myself all the time that Israel is a safe place uh, compared to, to, to the Soviet Union, to Russia, for example. Yes. So right. I'm not, yes. I don't have to be worried that much. Um, but uh, this, the, the situations like that, they all the time, trigger my fear, trigger my, my panic, and they, and I feel, thanks God, I know, uh, in all the techniques, but it's, it's continuous work, you have to work all the time on your reactions, because uh, I understand that my reactions, again, thanks God, are not, uh, they do not correspond uh, to that level of danger that we have here. Um. Besides the talking to yourself and the meditation and the breather techniques, is there anything else specifically that you do to help yourself, let's say to prevent yourself from being triggered? Or let's say like, you know, you, with your kids are still young, you know that maybe one day again, like they'll run off or something. Um, is there something that you can do when you're in a better state of mind to help yourself so that when you that happens to you again, you're not as triggered or, you know, Mm. It is difficult for me to answer because uh, it, it's it, it's like an accident. You are, you are, you're you're never prepared for that. So um, it is not an obsessive um, uh, I don't know disorder that I have for sure. Yes, for sure. I just something triggers me once in a while, and um, and I have to to overcome this. Uh, but. Um, uh, I believe the worst thing to do is trying to push it away or trying to hide sure, it. Sure, you don't push it away. But do you think that maybe maybe there's a thing that you can do to prevent yourself from being triggered, not to push it away, because life happens, things do happen. Um, and there's certain things in our just everyday life that the occurrence of them it can happen, like a standard car accident, um, kids running off. These are like everyday occurrences. So. If we know that, like, you know, let's say X is a trigger, okay, we mm -hmm. know something is a trigger, um, there's certain things that we can do, there's certain techniques that we can do beforehand to prevent ourselves from being triggered when that event actually happens. Do you, you mean on the daily basis? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a very small example, okay. About two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, um, I was in a car accident, okay, me and my three kids at the back, we were just very like, yeah. sort of like outside our apartment, and it was me in a van, and we just, we collided like this, side to side. Um, okay, so I did some techniques on my kids to help them and everything, um, and I did some journaling myself, I did some meditation, you know, certain things, but then actually today, earlier, as I was exactly the same spot where the, the collision was, there was another car coming down the road very fast and I suddenly found myself being triggered and I really thought I was okay and I found myself suddenly like you know I started to sweat and I really I was very aware of my I realized that I was being triggered within yeah. from the PTSD of what happened mm -hmm. and I and everything and I was fine and once I, I went into my parking lot um but I was properly like I was shaking and I honestly thought I was over it, this trigger, but I was, I can see I'm not over it because my, the way my body reacted and everything, it's, I still need to deal with it. Now, there's for sure, I mean, my area is not PTSD, this is not what I do, but I do know that there's definitely like techniques and certain things that we, I, I can do so that if I'm ever in that situation again, I just don't get triggered. I react the same way that I did before I had the accident. Now, this is a very minor, small example. Like we all came out. None of us had to. I mean, none of us ended up going to the hospital. We were. None of us had a scratch. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, your situation is very, very different. It's on a much larger scale, obviously. Um, but there's for sure things that you can do that 
when you're let's say you are in a situation and suddenly you know you don't find your your daughter or your son again but mm-hmm. like and you know you're going to you know intellectually they're going to be fine and you know but like our body doesn't always react like that true um, even when you're saying it now i feel like you know this sucking pain in your stomach <laughs> there you go but you know you're safe you, you know, know intellectually you're yeah. safe but your body doesn't always catch up with that mm-hmm. so my question is is like do you think that there are things that you can do to prevent yourself from being triggered when you enter such a situation again? Oh, I'd love to know them. Um, the only thing I can do is trying to um, to not, um, I think it's also to some extent a habit, you know, a habit. This is your reaction. This is how you, you, you learned to react to certain situ- uh, situations. Um, you think a yeah. habit can be changed? I think the habits can be changed. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Are you doing anything nowadays to help yourself in terms of that? Talking to you right now. Oh. <laughs> trying to be curious about um, about yeah. how I could do better, uh, how I can prevent those situations. But thanks God, again, I um, we live. We are very lucky uh, to live here. And yes, we have. Uh, um, Israel is not considered to be the safest place uh, uh, in the world, but it is a lot, a lot more. Uh, there's I mean, certain fewer. places that are safe. There's certain things that are safer here than, let's say, Europe. But there's certain things more dangerous than, let's say, Absolutely. Europe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I, I don't get triggered every day. It happens uh, once in a while, but. Um, and this is not something that really I'm overwhelmed with, and um, I really cannot continue living uh, without um, uh, without dealing with that. But still, I I I would be very interested to know what uh, what I could do to prevent those. It, it, because life happens, and uh, the strange things happen so that we uh, we have to know to be prepared how to react properly and not destroying ourselves. So I'll tell you what, you have this PTSD, this is not my area, but for anyone who's listening right now and has generalized anxiety, um, I highly recommend um, uh, things like journaling is really good because it gets out of your system onto paper and you can physically see um, what, sometimes I like just reading back and getting out of yourself, it's a amazing way to process your thought and be able to see actually what the situation is to read back on it Um, another way is um, is to um, actually go through your triggers what are the things that actually trigger you and what is it about that thing that triggers you so let's say for you for an example um, losing your child in a in in the super in the supermarket (laughs) supermarket Mm -hmm. okay but what is it about that thing that triggers you so for you it comes from something from your childhood okay but let's say one of our viewers here um let's say you have an anxiety over something and you don't know what it's from um when you know what your anxiety trigger is and you know what it's from then it's easier to go and get any help that you need so for you you've got ptsd so you think so I know so. <laughs> this is definitely PTSD. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible that uh, it's been for so many years? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Interesting. Definitely. Um, yes. So it needs to be dealt with in terms of how to deal with PTSD. So somebody who would be an expert in that area would be able to help you. You know, it's like... A tr- Trap, you're trapped in your uh, thought um, yeah. um, thought loop. Yes. And, uh, but then yes. somehow I managed to go out from it. It's, it's not yeah. that I'm... That because I you found a technique that, that works for you. Yeah. You found a technique that works for you. But if you keep on being triggered, you've even said yourself that you've noticed that how a standard Israeli would react to losing a child versus how you would react to losing a child is not the same. Even though intellectually your mind knows that we're living in a safe country, the chances of anything happening to your kid is very near to zero. um, But still your body doesn't react like that. Your inner being doesn't react like that because it's used to reacting to a certain 
to something that happened as a child to you. How, we, yes. how we're treated as children, how we're brought up as children, very often, well, not very often, does impact how we react to things as an adult. Like if you look at um, all the post-war children born, mm -hmm. born after the war to parents of, to, sorry, I'm losing my words. Okay, if you look at the children of survivors born post-war, they all carry a lot of trauma from their parents. Mm -hmm. But they were never in the war themselves, yet the way that their parents brought them up post-war would have been a reflection of being in the war. Like somebody is it brought up a, transferred? There is something like that, yeah, definitely. PTSD can definitely be genetically transferred, yes. I mean there've been there've been there's been research on it and everything. Um, like I see it with my parents. My parents were brought up in Iraq under Saddam Hussein and they're Jewish. Um, you never knew if your father would come home, could be just suddenly taken, you know. Um, and I see it like growing up with my mother, sometimes she would be like very anxious. And this was all things from Iraq, you know. Um, very often people who, I'm, I'm not saying like this is definitely an offshoot and everybody who hoards, um, wait one second. Sometimes people who are brought up very poor can maybe hoard one day. Okay, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that everybody who's a hoarder was once poor though. That's not what I'm saying. And everybody who was once poor goes into being a hoarder. But it could right. be that sometimes you go to the opposite extreme because you don't know, am I going to have this tomorrow? Um, so the way that we react nowadays, the way that your body is reacting as a result of something that's perfectly safe um, as a result of what, you, what happened to you growing up. Interesting. Yeah. Um, figure it out. We learn something new every day about ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Um, I want to just put it out there to anyone that's listening that has PTSD or so is um, I highly recommend actually somatic, exp the somatic experience and somatic intervention. Um, I'm not an expert in this area. I know there's a difference. I don't know what is the difference of the two. Um, but um, I know that they're both there. Um, I know about somatic intervention and it's actually really good. Um, it goes very often, I, I don't know too much about it. I just know it's really good. I know somebody that did it and it really, really helped her from her trauma as a child. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's listening to this, I, I can recommend that. Um, okay, um, do you have a message for anybody who's now listening to this? Um, that still has, still feels the embarrassment of the anxiety. Is there a message that you can give us from that to, to anyone who's listening? Um, I think what's important to know is that whenever you, you are triggered and you know that you are not well at that point of time, uh, is to know that um, it is good to share still with your beloved ones to to know. I know it feels like you're in a cage that you that nobody uh, can understand you because you think they, they might think that you're hysterical, um, and it is socially disapproved uh, when a woman is screaming and is trying to I don't know is, uh, does not find a place uh, for herself. Uh, but this is a temporary reaction. And what Tali said that we we can uh, have techniques to prevent even whenever this happens, we we know how to be prepared for that. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, I think so many what 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 I see among, among the um, entrepreneurs that I uh, that I uh, help them with the mark with some marketing tools, um, I see that. Almost everyone is triggered by something. This is, this is a very common thing. Absolutely. Uh, men are worried about uh, financial stability for their families. Uh, women are worried that they would not be able to be um, to be good mothers if they are entrepreneurs, uh, and be good wives for their husbands, to be to be to be friends with their uh, with their fam other family members. We're all triggered by something, and this is very common. And the worst you can do to yourself is say that I am um, that I'm a bad person, that I'm a, a person who something is bad with me, something is not normal. 
that all the others are not uh, are not sweating, are not worried, are not um, they are calm. And what is wrong with me? Uh, there's nothing wrong with you. You just have to. There's nothing wrong with you. Different triggers for different people. Um, and you can control it, and you can have a better life. Uh, absolutely, there is a way. It's just you need to find the way. Um, and another thing um, I want to add to that is. Um, everyone is going through something it's just a matter of what is that something everybody um is there anything you do specifically today to help yourself you did mention meditation i um i i do sometimes meditation but what really does help me is to play piano you know, this ah. is my my way to express Music therapy. whatever negative feelings I might have, whatever doubts, self doubts, whatever fears. Um, I go, I play my favorite pieces, and I find such a satisfaction and self fulfillment. And this is between you and the piano and and God. This is this. It's not for the public. It's not uh, to entertain my kids, uh, but it's. It is my own therapy, I think. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Thank you very much, Tally. Thank you, Elena, for sharing our story and what revelations we had. And Tally, <laughs> you are the person uh, who improves people's lives, uh, even th doing this interview, in, in the process of this interview. I felt like there's another side of anxiety when you start, you start getting curious about what you're really experiencing, and and it somehow and I, I know it is that my my health goes down, that I'm more relaxed. So that what I'm doing, I'm just trying to explore things. Thank you so much for joining us, Elena. Thank I really you very appreciate much. it. Um, if you would like to share your anxiety story, then please be in touch with me. Again, details are at the end of this video. If you would like to receive these interviews, this interview series straight into your inbox, um, the details again are at the end of this video. Thank you so much, Elena, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Have a lovely day. Thank you.